Oh boy, Kakomi's coming around for a banner number two, and I noticed that there's a lot of people excited for her return. So I decided to do a free-to-play guide for any of the new players who want to play her in the future. This guide is going to cover the weapon, artifacts, and overall build and composition for Kokomi's stats. It would be great if you watched the video all the way through for the best part, but I put some timestamps in the video so you can skip. Now without further ado, let's get going! Uh, Kokomi? What are you doing? Come on, we got a video to make! Focus! Focus! Anyway, the weapon you want to be using is called the Prototype Amber. This is the best free-to-play option for Kokomi, and it's best in slot overall for 4-star weapons. You can also craft this at the blacksmith, so you don't have to waste any Primo gems wishing for it. This also makes it easier to reach maximum refinement level. What makes the Amber so valuable is the massive HP increase it gives you, and the regeneration effect it gives you after you ultimate. I'll be covering the HP increase in a later segment, but for now I want to focus on the passive abilities that this weapon gives you. Prototype Amber has a unique ability that whenever you take damage and then you pop your ultimate, it will immediately begin healing you over the course of 6 seconds. This healing becomes very important in the next segment, as I'll show you what the artifact set will do. Oh, we're doing this still? Alright, whatever. Now, I already covered this artifact set in a previous video, but I'll be covering it again because this is very important for her scaling on healing and damage. The Ocean Clam set has a 4 piece effect that takes any incoming healing and outputs it as raw physical damage. It also gives a healing bonus so that the accumulated healing multiplies and then the damage multiplies based off of that. And this damage also stacks off of your weapon's special ability. For your main stats, you probably want to focus all HP except for your headpiece where you probably want to go with healing bonus. And for your substats, you probably want to focus on mainly attack and HP substats. When I activate Karage's Oath, you can immediately see a bubble above my head. This bubble is the catalyst that collects the healing done and then outputs it into the damage. It also procs as many times as you receive healing, and the more health you gain for each interval, the more damage you'll deal overall. Girl, it just keeps going and going, doesn't it? And still going. So, this is where all the focus on HP and healing bonus comes into effect. Kokomi's talents scale directly off of HP. So, the more HP you have, the more healing you do, and the more damage you do overall. After you activate her ultimate, your basic attacks also gain extra damage based off of her max HP as well. She also has a passive talent that adds damage based off of her max healing bonus. Kurage's Oath is a bit of a pick and choose. Its healing scales off of HP, but its damage scales off of Hydro. If you want to do more Hydro damage, you can go with a Hydro Goblet, or you can stick to HP build and just build tanky. As you can see here, activating my ult causes my basic attack damage to increase, as well as causing the effect of my Clam set to increase as well, up to several times in fact. Oh good grief. So these are my overall stats with Kokomi. Uh, I have low HP and I can actually go higher because I'm using a Hydra Goblet and not an HP Goblet. And honestly, the damage ratio between the two really isn't that much of a difference. Now, I need to let you new players know that Kokomi's crit rate is negative crit rate. So, that's why I said focus on HP and attack, because adding crit is absolutely useless. To maximize Kokomi's damage, you have to find a composition that works well for her passive damage and reactions. Adding a pyro character like Xiangling to the list guarantees that you're going to get very good vaporized damage. And adding an electro turret character into the mix makes for an excellent taser composition. So with all of this put together, and using your skills properly, you can get away with fighting with little to no downtime, and it's actually very fun. You should try her out in multiple different team comps just to see what works best for you and the characters that you have at the time. Anyway, I'll stop talking and let you enjoy this montage that I've put together for you.
Hope you all enjoyed the video. I hope it was informative enough for all of you. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. But that's all I got for you, and I'll see you later.